Yeah, well, if they have any more and some crackers and cheese, just not being one of Welcome to Book Standard Sand 2023. Thank you guys for being here and what you're doing with our room. I was going to say, in case we have any, I know what we do, so I will. Once again, say thank you to the selection committee, Michael Grant, who is here finally. <laughs> uh, Lisa Garrison, Dustin Hewitt, uh, and um, Pam Sadako. We're always happy to welcome new people who want to read books and share them. So if you're at all interested in joining the committee, let me know. It only takes a few meetings. It's one of those obligations that um, we're thinking because it doesn't go on in our town. We have to do two meetings. Yeah, there's two meetings this year. Um, I also want to thank Card Curing Books and Gifts for their support. They printed our bookmarks for us and they were nice enough to give each presenter a copy of um, being presented. We're really lucky to have such a great library in this little town and an independent city. As I mentioned last week, this is Library Advocacy Month. That's the time that we let our legislators know how important libraries are to our community. Thank you to everybody who I accosted last time and had for taking this way out of the library side. Um, I would love to get some more of them today. Um, we uh, have seen the governor's budget, and in that budget, she cut over half a million dollars from Southern Tier Library, not statewide, Southern Tier. Um, now, this happens frankly. It's a little bit of a political football and, and not um, one with a lot of drama because people do really love libraries. But it's important for us to let our legislators know how important we think libraries are, how they use them, how they support everyone in our community. So you can have your picture taken with one of my signs. There are also postcards over there that you can um, sign. And be here because we will be bringing those to um, our legislators on February 28th. Bus full of people to Albany to think of how important libraries are. Um, I also wanted to remind people that the uh, next friend book sale begins on May 6th. And you won't have to travel up to the fire hall. It's being held at the Union Hall, which is uh, the street corner from there. So we're looking forward to that. It'll be a lot easier for, for everybody not having to load up trucks and so forth. New pictures on all these. The friends have so many confirmed that they are getting us to please. Take one away with you today. <laughs> There's some really good ones here. The two tornadoes are amazing. They're, they're a whole pile of good stuff. Um, so do that. And now to get that <laughs> um, this today's book is Taste My Life and Food. Yes, yeah, Taste My Life and Food by Stanley Tucci. If you haven't read it, here's again my pitch for the library system. There are 11 copies in the library system, including a large print version. There are also copies from CD and e book and audiobook download. So um, this is one of the great things about the system. We're not going to use one copy available. Waiting for all of us to read 
you can draw, draw from the other 47 libraries in the five counties that some of your library system oversees. Uh, okay, today we have a presenting duo, Melissa Colestino and John Siriani. John grew up in southwestern Pennsylvania, has a county degree from Cornell Community and Elmira Colleges, and loves Italy, hockey, and animals. Well, this is originally from Payne Post, but lives in Cornell now. She'll be retiring at the end of this month with their 30 year career at Cornell Incorporated. And while they didn't include it in the bio, I know that John and Melissa enjoy great food and traveling to Italy, making them apt presenters for this book. And I pulled from the collection of, please take these books home, and if you're an Italian cookbook. <laughs> Buongiorno a tutti. Grazie per essere venuti oggi. Benvenuto alla nostra presentazione del libro Stanley Tucci Juice Ball, La mia vita al reverse of Chile. In other words, welcome. And it's a presentation by Stanley Tucci Book. Hey, smile if you're through. So, have any of you read this book yet? No, I'm just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> we enjoy this book a lot, so we we'll kick off here with a little bit of Mr. Tucci. Many of you know him through his acting role, and most recently through his uh, Searching for Italy City, which was on CNN. You definitely really enjoy that. But a few other things about Mr. Tucci. At age 62, he's been involved in film and TV and some theater for probably 30 some years now. Starting off with the Princess Honor back in 1985, including uh, voicing Maestro Cadenza in Beauty and the Beast, as well as Supernova recently. Uh, he's won some awards and uh, guest appeared on the TV show Monk. He's a rather interesting show. And searching for Italy, which I mentioned previously here, but he won. A couple of uh, Arthur Henry Awards for Outstanding Host of Nonfiction Series. It's a shame that it won't be carried on CNN anymore. We do understand it's going to be carried on the And he's looking for private funding to continue to get to all the provinces in Italy. One of the more interesting things is he also got to work with Meryl Street. And there's an interesting anecdote in this book. Discuss a little later. Some other things that he's been in, uh, he's been in Donald Trump 1, and Sarah Murphy's limited series, Hughes, Ellie and Jones, and the drama line here. So he's also voiced uh, Bitsy Bradyham in the Apple TV animated series, Central Park. Like me, Melissa, we love Italy, we love food, and we had a kinship with Stanley Hughes. So Stanley is of Italian descent, of course, and John and I are both of Italian descent. You couldn't tell from my names. <laughs> Even though we have different names, we're married to each other. Um, it's just that I was 50. 50. <laughs> I didn't see much point in changing my name after carrying the same name for 56 years. So I can't. So, but anyway, we're married. Um, we're both from a section of Italy called Calabria. Calabria is in the toe of the boot of Italy. It's right next to Sicily. And Stanley Tucci is also of Calabrese descent. So once again, we really connected with Stanley on that level. And um, oh yeah. So one of the most important things about the Calabrese is their their the importance of food and family, sitting down at the table together and enjoying the food. And it's simple food. But if it's made properly, it's absolutely amazing. Um, Stanley doesn't focus on Italy in this book. He focuses kind of globally. He talks a lot about his family, his children, his wife that passed from cancer, and then his new wife, who's actually British and we live in London. Um, so John and I have traveled a lot, but really, not, we're not world travelers. We've limited it to, to Europe. Pretty much, we got uh, married on a cruise ship in Scotland in August. We had to buy winter coats and hats because it was so. Uh, <laughs> we were actually married in the North Sea, 
and uh, and um, it was very cold, and and we had to be out of we had to be in international waters in order for it to be legal here in the United States. But um, what you see in the North Sea are a lot of oil rigs. So that's a little diversion from the story. Um, Stanley talks about food globally, and he talks about the food that he likes to make, and he talks about the food that he's eaten in many places, like Wall Street is one of his many really good stories. Um, I'll also share a story that I found close to my heart based on our travels. But we went back and forth to Italy a number of times on a cruise ship. Uh, the last time, that was the last time, the time before the last time we went, we actually went to Calabria. And Calabria is challenging because um, people don't speak English there. It's one of the few places in Europe that they really don't speak English. And John is very good at kind of taking context based on his, his classes that he's been taking. It's difficult for him to respond. But you have nice things like, uh, what is it, Google Translate? Mm -hmm. That you can talk into and then it will talk back to you in the language of your choice. Um, so we visited the small towns in uh, Calabria, the, his family town, uh, my family town, or that was my family town, we visited the coast. So we did that. And when we came home, we discovered Stanley Tucci's Searching for Italy. And so the first season was on CNN, a little political, but not too much. Um, it was kind of a, a, it was kind of perfect. He'd go into, he, he delves into all of the regions of Italy one at a time. Um, and he talks about the economy there, the people there, like how pizza came to Naples is, was very important to him because pizza originated in Naples because, uh, people were very poor and the best way to, feed themselves was to fry bread and when you fried it, it could last for hours. So that became pizza. So uh, we really enjoyed um, searching for Italy. We watched all of them and then it got discontinued. I think we got a couple of sessions on HDT, no, Food Network, but they're still looking for a network. And if you haven't seen it, you can watch it on Hulu. I highly recommend it. Um, so, then we went back to Italy last year. John's, I'll let John talk about this, but his daughter was getting married and she chose to get married in Italy because she could get married any place she wanted. So uh, she chose Italy and then we waited to, she was supposed to be there in 2020. Didn't happen. She was, they had a place reserved, but it was in 2021. It couldn't happen. Finally, last year it happened. So tell me about. Yeah. Well, we got cleared of all this COVID craziness. We got to travel into Italy. Uh, their wedding actually happened in a little village near the Adriatic Sea in the Marche province called Petrito. It was a converted castle that had a bunch of rooms for all the guests, and everything was just focused in this little town, and most happenings occurred in and around that castle. Uh, but beforehand, we spent some time in Rome. That she had to go and do all of these machinations with the authorities. So, their method would be recognized not only in Italy, but also in the United States. So, we joined them in Rome for a few days. And one of the places we went to is this place called Armando al Pantheon. It's a restaurant that, if you are facing the Pantheon in Rome, go up to the street on the right side, three or four doors up. And one of the episodes from Searching for Italy is focused in Rome. And that was one of the restaurants. Yeah, since we love food so much, <laughs> we decided we're going to take the new teacher's advice on the food there. So Melissa got the cacio e pepe, which is uh, like a Parmesan. So it's just made with pasta, Parmesan, uh, pasta water, and pepper. But if you do it right, it comes out perfect. It's very easy to do wrong, though. Yes, yeah. try to do the times here. <laughs> The cheese stays clumpy. I can't get that creaminess developing. So I'm working. But I chose the dish that's going to be The rigatoni nutriziana. 
And they tell me he's obvious in this one. But the sauce, they made guanciale. Anybody here familiar with guanciale? Okay, it's essentially a bacon made from the jowl of a pig. So they take this in small chunks, throw it into a skillet, and cook it. Remove it from the skillet, add a ladle of tomato sauce, continue cooking that for a little bit with a few herbs. And then when the sauce is ready, they toss it in a bowl, pause it, and serve it is out of this world. And it's discussed in one of his visits in here. If I'm not mistaken, the recipe is also in here. One of the things we truly love is he was able to procure recipes from these restaurants around the world, and many of them are from starred Michelin chefs. So we're going to be trying a few more of these. Oh, yeah. Let's see what else happens tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so we went, we did the wedding. We were there for a few days, and then we were staying on a stay. We went down to Sorrento and went out for several more days. And one of the other restaurants in here, called Los Golio, it was also featured in Sarah Beach's episode about the Amalfi Coast. Mm -hmm. And Melissa will tell you about this adventure. So, um, Los Golio is, is um, kind of across the peninsula um, and across from Amalfi in, in that Amalfi area. And um, we actually, Stale had been there. He'd been there with his first wife. And they tried for many, they made this recipe that I had for years and years and years, and then he went back with his current wife and discovered that he had been making it wrong, but he could never figure out why he never tasted quite right. Mm -hmm. But the story of getting there is interesting because the Amalfi is very narrow streets, and they twist and turn like this, <laughs> and they got caught, but after having to back up a few times, and nearly getting it, John did a great job, but we said, we're not driving here. So... Since uh, since the restaurant was folio was so far away, we took we actually hired a car. Being in LA, it was like an hour late, and because <laughs> because um, Stan Latucci had documented this restaurant so well, we were sure that we were not going to have a reservation. So we gave the driver a hard time. We told them very clearly, we're paying with a credit card. They brought no credit card reader. And Tony said, then you'll be back when it's time for us to go home because we're not paying you. So we have a credit card reader. <laughs> so um, so anyway, we get over there and it's crazy, windy, twisty. The drivers were very good. Um, and we got into the restaurant and there was really nobody there. They were thrilled to have us. So <laughs> we went in and we... We got to our table and there were, you know, there were people peppered around the restaurant. We were sitting out on this pier. What ocean is that? What is the rest of the sea? Terrain sea. I get them all confused. Um, we were sitting out on this kind of pier in the terrain sea. There was a huge fish tank next to us that I think you see in Stanley's um, searching for Italy with all kinds of critters in it. And a few tables that were peppered around us were mostly Americans. So we chatted with them, and I went from table to table and took pictures for their scrapbooks. And one woman told me that she was uh, she was channeling to Stanley Tucci, and she hoped that he would show up. <laughs> so in the in the book is a uh, in the book is a recipe for this uh, zucchini pasta, and he didn't originally make it properly. I had it, it was amazing. You would never know that it was just zucchini, some cheese, some pepper, and pasta. But you um, you put the zucchini, you thin slice the zucchini, you put it in a pot of oil, and you, you basically cook it, and then you take it out and you let it sit overnight. And then the next day, you turn it into this sauce with cheese and um, pepper and pasta, and it was, Amazing. Now, what they didn't tell Stanley on his first trip was you don't jello fry it, you deep fry it. They also didn't tell him that there was butter in it. He said, Oh, there must have been something lost in translation here that I that I've been doing it wrong all these years. But um, so that recipe is also in this book, and it's truly an amazing recipe. And the restaurant is fabulous. There were some Italian patrons in there are Taxi driver who did pick us up to take us back to the hotel. So it's 
So there's a unique reference to both of them. So I think it was during the filming of Julia and Julia, or Julie and Julia, let me get this straight here, that Gavin Tucci, Meryl Street, and one other person, I believe from the cast, were traveling between two locations where that in France. In France, yes. In France. Thank you. So they found a place that they wanted to stop and grab something to eat. So it's somewhere in the uh let me see the Dallas Post Company. I think it's near Normandy. Yeah. yeah. So they were cruising along. Not and Normandy. They found this place. They thought, oh, this looks good. We'll stop here and eat. And looking at the menu, they noticed the specialty of the house was this, and forgive my French because I can't pronounce French very well. It's and do what they? Does he have that one? Okay. <laughs> They were thinking it was Andrew Sauce. So we're the blue one for this. And you know, drinking some wine before things came out, they were quite happy with it. Then the food came out. And everybody was like, what is this? So Bell Street, being the brave one, she dug in, took a bite, and her comment was hmm. Check it on you. <laughs> Stanley Tucci took a bite and asked for a couple of seconds before it wound up in his napkin. And in the end, and there's some coarse language in this book, but I will admit it. But he commented that the thing actually looked like a certain part of the horse's neck. <laughs> so they learned a lesson about checking what is. Actually, going to be so. Well, first, I would and do sausage. This, I don't think I'm at. <laughs> what, what was particularly funny about that was that the um, the server came out and said, "Is there something wrong? No one's eating this." And they all said, "Oh no, it's very lovely. We're just not full." And so the whole staff came out and they're laughing, kind of behind their hand, like they knew that what they what they had ordered they would not like. So they cleared it all away and brought out something that they would all eat, right? Oh, no. Oh, no. no. That was not the world traffic. Right. Certainly, patients drink them. So we would recommend this book. Um, it, is, it is peppered with some language which Stanley uses. Um, and on uh, TV, it's just bleeped out, but he does use it. Um, <laughs> Lots of good recipes, not just Italian. There's some British recipes from his wife. Um, there's a martini recipe in there that looks really good. A Negroni recipe. A Negroni recipe. So um, I guess we'll turn it over to questions. Does anybody have any questions about the book? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Good question about the book, but I just wondered if you have ever had it. Uh, the question is, have we ever met Stanley Tucci and we got his autograph? Uh, we have not. It would, I think it would be fun to come hang out with him and let him take the lead and start to show us some really cool things. Right. Yeah. John, I enjoy, enjoy your dual presentation as much as the book. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Gary, is this book is, is it more catalog or this is a compilation of how he views his life through his culinary research. Right. He or okay, because there's even some Gucci family recipes in here. And that's the food, probably his galley. That's one trying to replicate these. Yeah, the downsides of this is significant. Yeah. But the whole thing feels like it's through his voice. I'm seeing him as an actor and also presenting on certain events. This is how he actually feels about it. And he also discusses how he had lost his sense of taste for a while due to a loss. And we'll get into anything more in case you want to read this and I'll just spoil it. But that was a very difficult time. Yes, his uh, time growing up with his parents and his mother being a fabulous cook, that was fascinating how his lunches 
at school were so different than all the others. <laughs> because she really, I mean, she did a fantastic meal for the little people. Didn't her? That, that part was very really good. It was. And what's interesting about that is my mother was always that way too. But you never wanted that lunch when you were little, right? Yeah. You wanted the Wonder Bread with the peanut butter and the jelly. Right? <laughs> and, well, or below me. <laughs> so I have to know, because we watched Searching for Emily as well. Did you go to the pub where you had to do the knock and say the special word? We didn't. No, we didn't. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know how that really does work out. Oh. <laughs> so if you go, let me know. <laughs> Certainly. My daughter, when she was planning everything out, she created this map on Google Maps. It's 95 different things that you could go see the community app. So it might be included in there. I have to pull that thing back out of the room. You know, the world has so much that you can't possibly do it in a year. Right. Oh, gosh, yes. After a while, it all starts looking the same. <laughs> so. Any other questions? I don't know if I can keep that in there, and I don't think the tagline is really simple. Yeah. <laughs> they make it sound simple. Yeah. Okay. So far, I've tried to pack it up and it's not up to the standard about the moment. But it's good. Yeah, it tastes great, but it's, you know, the cheese still gets a little cold. Or maybe I understand you can pull it off. <laughs> Did anything you read in this book influence your future script? Do you have any plans you did because of it? Uh, we're still we're still, you know, actively debating our next trip. So um I have to say not yet. Not yet, but if it gets to doing it. Episode searching for Italy on the Arabian Quadrant section. Uh, we consider doing like a three or four week snowboarding in that area because it's a city that is large enough that it will have enough English speakers to get by. Well, if we'd like a snowbird to southern Italy rather than Florida um, yeah. at some point. <laughs> have you been to, to Sicily? Have not yet. We want to do that too, and we could see it. We actually could see it. Across, I, across, I don't. We did see Mount Etna. Yes, you could see it across the strait. Yeah. 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 But no, we didn't. We haven't made that yet. We talked about it, but gosh, it was so challenging that trip. That and we had so many places we wanted to go that couldn't do it all. Yeah. Let's see. Taco was in your book as well. I think you mentioned this. Yeah. Are you friendly? I was just trying to try any of those. Do you have a favorite? Uh, um, I haven't tried anything yet. Uh -huh. The Negroni recipe is in there, but we tend to lean towards the apple spritz. It's not as bitter as the apple versus the pink Thank you. Is this a sequential book of his life? Yes, it's called Or I think it's called Kings. Is it just about his channel of issues and his life and issues? Or is there, is there a few people who will say that I was, you know, starting to read it? I was so watching and so what is it continue to? Yes. There it is. Yes. So, well, it's vignettes, really, and it kind of jumps around, but it, it focuses in the beginning on his growing up years, why he is kind of the way he, the way he is, why he loves food. Um, we talked about his, his mother, and then it, and then it, uh, it talks about his college years, his lean years living in New York City. So yet there is kind of a sequential element to it. And then it's more vignettes of mm -hmm. his tours. And the rest is irrelevant to each of those vignettes. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much an unfamiliar, specifically food in his life. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's in the context of the other things he was doing. Right. Uh, I think from his early life, his father 
the big thing on board is starting to get into it. Mm -hmm. So the family moved to uh, North Bank Road, did his studies, and that's when he started picking up on the Italian holiday. That's great. Okay, that's fine. Hard to, it's hard to remember that. Just we'll take the contents in the book. Yeah. <laughs> Now he 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 deals in uh, with his his first wife was uh, from New England, Maine, and he talks a lot about like their Fourth of July celebration. He talks there's a story about that. Talks about how his father in law her, his father in law could not cook at all, but he could do a lobster roast, and so they would pile everything in the car and go to the beach in Maine, and he knew how to layer the fish and the the lobster and the seaweed and the corn and everything else that goes with the he might have even used clams. Um, so he, that's that's a vignette. Um, he talks about his current wife uh, living in live it, they live in London and she makes these roast potatoes. Well, she doesn't just chop them in little cubes, roll them in oil, and put them in the oven. No, she doesn't do that. She takes duck, she uh, boils them. She peels them and boils them. She uh, buys duck fat and puts it in a sheet pan and puts it in a 400 degree oven while the potatoes are boiling. Then she, but you can't let the potatoes boil too much. You can't have mashed potatoes. They have, they can only be forked to about three inches. And then, and then, or uh, maybe an inch. And then she, um, empties them out and then she takes the pot and shakes it to like soften them. And the whole time she's going through this process, Stanley and his mother are saying, this is not roast, I'm roasting potatoes. And so she'll go on a little more and I'll say, but what are you doing? I'm roasting potatoes. And the whole house fills up with smoke from the duck fat in the oven. And they have to open the door. And um, finally, she takes this mush of potatoes, puts it in a duck fat, puts it back in the oven for an hour. And apparently, this is the best potatoes they've ever eaten. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lot of little stories like that. And it's sort of a theme of eating at the communal and familial community. And also, I think a lot of that about the charm he perceived to Stephanie's wife. Well, mm -hmm. Yes, very much a perfectionist, as well as a, a good drinker. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Well, thank you so much for letting us come here and talk about this book. We really appreciate it. And we would love to do it again. Thank you. Thank you.